You know what's going on, so I'm just out here. You got a real job? So, um, I work at Walmart at the deli uh, down in North Carolina. Cunningham, the back half of the race. Not much time, and then on the inside, is that Dylan Beard confirmed wow. the winner in 744. And that is as big an upset as you will have at this point for the entire day. Only two weeks in, and we're seeing deli workers laying out professionals. And I guess a couple of world records too. Let's get straight into it. We started off the week just like the last. Swoboda striking down her own 60 meter world lead, who she held in tandem with Julian Alfred. 7.01 seconds and in front of a home crowd. She also continues the trend of tight races as in close second was Italian national Dosso, who lowered her own national record to 7.02. And the men's triple, Diaz Andy from Italy, also furthered his own world lead, and by a big 20 centimetres, 17.61 metres, while only taking two jumps in the competition and winning by 59 centimetres. On the distance side, Salomon Borega from Ethiopia, the 2021 Olympic 10k champ, bangs out a 7 minute 25.82 second indoor 3k, a personal best, the fifth best all time, come Olympic year, and he's confidently showing off he's in form again. Then back in Sweden, one of the coolest official World Athletics meets was happening, the Mondo Classic, hosted by the king himself, Armand Mondo de Plantis. Here he matches up against the best pole vaulters Earth has to offer, also known as Mondo and Friends. Of course he won his own meet, jumping 5.92 meters, and was some of the coolest camera work we've seen at any athletics event. This shit needs to be a staple in the pole vault. We also saw Casey Lightfoot, the American, also clear 592, but took second on countback. The middle of the week was pretty barren. Most of the athletes were heading out to two big hitter meets in Levin, France, and New York later this week. But Hernandez Perez, the Cuban triple jumper, who won bronze at the 2023 World Champs, did further her own triple jump world lead to 14.86 meters, 26 centimeters above anyone else. And now for the regularly broadcasted news segment. Dina Asher-Smith, prolific British sprint star and the 2019 200 meter world champ, is confirmed injured after pulling up against Julian Alford last week. She also pulled out of the New York Melrose Games later this week, and she probably won't be running till outdoors. Raven Saunders, Olympic silver medalist in the women's shot put, discusses the disrespect World Athletics shows towards the women's shot put, unofficially announcing she'll only be doing five meets this year, then retiring, as this sport isn't financially viable as a career. That actually sucks pretty hard, especially for an Olympic medalist. And in even further controversial news, Mo Katir, the 2023 world champion silver medalist in the 5K and the European 3K and 5K record holder, is provisionally suspended for whereabouts failures. So this one will be interesting to see how it develops. And for those confused, this could be a repeat of what happened to Christian Coleman. Now onto the weekend with a stacked indoor meeting in France. A lot of big dogs about to play, and first up, with a massive amount of bias on my end, a rare New Zealand feature, Eliza McCartney snatches the women's pole vault world lead with a 4.85 meter jump, clobbering the bar, but it stays on like a true professional. Femke Bowl also added to her growing list of 49.6 second times with a 49.63. Here she edged out her own world lead in the indoor 400 meter, besting her training partner, Clavier, and the two of them undoubtedly in form. Money on bowl to beat her own indoor 400 meter world record before the season is over. At this meet, we also got to witness Ariel Knighton's indoor 200 meter debut, the world's fastest under 20 200 meter runner in history. 20.21 was the time, the fastest indoor debut in history, and of course, a world lead for the young prodigy. A lot of talk if he'll attack Frederick's indoor 200 meter world record this year. Grant Holloway also had another go, and another win to the 10 year streak, and he dropped his world lead by 0.3 to 7.32 seconds. He's already dominating the leaderboard this year by over a tenth of a second in a 60 meter race. World record bets are on. Gudaf Sagai, the 1500 and 5k world record holder, ran the indoor 3k this week and just missed the indoor world record with a stunning 8 minute 17.11 second time. Still the third fastest time in history. She's going to be a hot topic again this year, no doubt. Now, in the NCAA, which is basically just the G League for track and field if you really think about it, Terence Jones, 
and really the entire Texas Tech team, throw down some more insane 60 meter times. Jones ran 6.47, the second fastest time in the world this year, closely followed by his teammate, Dondre Swint, running a 6.49. TRP has talked about it, but the men's college 60 meter is going crazy right now. And with the historic 100 meter finals in 2023, with seven college students going sub 10 in the same race, it might be possible we could see something similar again. The women's high jump has also been making its rounds. Lamara Distin set a Jamaican national record with a jump of 1.97 meters, which also happens to be the Olympic standard and the third highest jump this year. The 10th was a really big day, so here are the last of those results. Korean Wu sang Kyok equals the men's high jump world lead with a clean 2.33 in the Czech Republic. We also saw Curly kinda bombing, dropping a 6.7 second in the 60 meter final after a 6.56 in the heats. He finished 7th to college kids. It was later reported it was cramps, but still kind of disappointing from such a hype contender. And lastly, Ruth Usaro from Nigeria leaping 6.87 meters in the women's long jump. A new world lead and Paris Olympics auto qual. Then the very next day, we head into the Milrose Games in New York City, the de facto biggest meet of the week, and where two world records would fall. Let's start with the 60 meter. On the women's side, Julian Alfred storms away from the entire world, the first sub 7 of the year, 6.99 seconds, dethroning Swoboda for good, at least for this week. On the men's, Christian Coleman opens, and it's a different race than we're used to seeing. He's out of the blocks with the rest of the field, and he edges away as the race continues. 6.51 seconds without his iconic rocket start. And while not completely relevant, Obinyala also ran this time across the world in Paris, furthering his own PB and national record for a second week in a row. In the women's 60 meter hurdles, eyes were on Danielle Williams, the 2023 110 hurdles world champion and Tia Jones, who ran a world lead and won out the week prior. But in one of the most tightly contested events in track and field right now, Bahamian Devin Charlton would blast away from the field. Fast start from Akira Nugent of Jamaica, Devin Charlton of the Bahamas. 7.67 7 seconds, a new 60 meter hurdles world record. She missed out on medals at the last Olympics and world champs, just, and you could see truly how much this meant to her. The men saw a similar narrative, and somehow an even bigger underdog story. Dylan Beard would slash 0.56 off his last year's best to take down a stacked field including Roberts, Tinch and Cunningham, three finalists from last year's world champs. Second place, 749. start to get things under what happened the race not much time and then on the inside is that dylan beard who's kind of 7.44 seconds the third fastest time of the year while he's working in a walmart deli full time unbelievably impressive shout out to all the athletes continuing to go after it while working that's real shit josh kerr last year's 1500 meter world champ the inga britson slayer would lay down a dominant run crushing the indoor two mile world record by just shy of three seconds, eight minutes and 67 milliseconds, and no one else even in camera shot at the finish line. American Grant Fisher would also cross the line exactly three seconds behind to just miss the old world record himself, but a new American record. We also saw Yaroslava continue her dominance, jumping a hard four two meters in the women's high jump, and on her last attempt. That's a pretty regular height for her, but only two have been over it this year. And lastly, Ellie St. Pierre setting a new American record in the women's mile. 4 minutes, 16 seconds, 41 milliseconds. Loosely followed by Jessica Hull in second, with a 4.19 for an Australian record. What really made headlines though, is Ellie gave birth to her son less than a year ago, and only returned to competition a week ago. Woman quite literally built different. Track is truly starting to heat up. Two world records, sprint rivalries heating up, and more unknowns coming out of the workforce to put pressure on the pros. Honestly excited to see this man, Dylan Beard, toe the line against a generationally talented field of 110 hurdlers. Thanks for watching, see you next time.